Every word of God is employed and active. There's nothing he says that's idle. So when things come out of our mouth that are not the will of God, it's unemployed, it's lazy, it's inactive. That rhema word, every idle rhema word that men shall speak, they shall have to give an account for it on the day of judgment. People think it has to do with saying curse words. Now I have to stand in front of Jesus and say, well, I said three curse words when I was five. It's not that. It's every inactive, uncreative word that came out of your mouth. That was not the will of God. That we have to stand and account for. Now that really stopped me in my shoes. Because how many have we spoken? Right? But the Lord can forgive you now. Amen? Remember when I told you you woke me up and said you can cancel your order? You can change your order. I had to say to the Lord, yeah, I've been speaking things that are inactive. They're unemployed. They're not creative. My mouth needs to change in that. Amen? Those are the things that we're held accountable for. Because men are in the image of God. So everything they speak has power. So we are in, so we think it's things like you smoked a cigarette when you were five. We think it's those things. To Jesus, it's the words. It's the words that are so important. It's the things that come out of our mouth because that's what's in your heart. It's the things that come out of your mouth. That's what's the most important to him. That's where he looks at. That's what he's looking at. That's why he would say, remember the book in, in the Old Testament, King David, who sinned I don't know how many times, you know, killed a guy to be with his wife. He messed up I don't know how many times. But the Bible would say he was a man after God's own heart. That's because what came out of his mouth was always creative. He was a worshiper. He was the best worshiper in the entire history of the scripture. And he would worship and love on the Lord and have such creative power come out of his mouth, even though he failed in other areas. To God, his heart was more powerful than his failure. That's powerful. See, church has it backwards. They're looking at, like, people's shortcomings of, you know, whatever act of the flesh. They're missing that the words, the mouth, the heart, all of that is the thing that Jesus is actually looking at. It's the thing that Jesus is actually looking at. That's the thing Jesus is actually looking at. And I promise you, when your mind is renewed, there are things that you used to do that you don't want to do anymore. It's just the truth, right? There are things I, do, I don't do anymore that I used to do. And nobody had to beat that out of me. It's just in my mind renewal, I didn't want to do them anymore. Amen? So our words are the most important. So let's go. <clears throat> and I want to end here because I thought this was amazing. Is everyone ready? This is Luke. I thought this was amazing. Luke 1. Remember how we talked about how Jesus had to literally pray the creative will of God about the crucifixion, even though he knew he was going to get crucified, but yet it needed to come into existence? Listen to this. Luke 1. Don't you think that God knew who he was going to choose to give birth to Jesus? Don't you think God already had a plan? He did. He had a plan in his mind of who he wanted to give birth to Jesus. He had a will in the mind of God. Now listen to this. Luke 1, verse 38. The angel has just spoken to Mary, and Mary says, And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy rhema word. And the angel departed from her. When she spoke that, in the Greek, it's rhema again. And that be it unto me is the same word, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So when she said, and be it unto me, she literally brought into existence the creative will of God to be impregnated to give birth to Jesus. That's what it says in the Greek. She brought it into existence. Be it unto me according to your rhema word, Lord. That's what she said. So don't you find it interesting that God knew who was, he could have just made her pregnant. Right? He could have just whacked her and then she's pregnant. But she had to receive the word. 
She had to receive it and then create it by saying it. Be it unto me according to your word. Let this happen to me. Just like Jesus had to say, let this cup not pass from me. I'm going to do your will. There's an agreement that God is looking for in the creative power of his will. He is not a sovereign God just smacking you with his will. It's a co-creation. He's looking for you to receive what he wants to do and then create it into being. Say it into being. Speak it into being. Do you understand me? Is everyone with me? But if you don't want it, it will not happen because it's a co-creation. If you don't want it, it will not happen. It's a co-creation. You have to create it into being. You have to let the will of the Lord be created in your life. It doesn't just happen sovereignly. That's why people, I've never understood that. People are like, well, God's will is sovereign. It just happens whether we want it to or not. That's not true. It's co-creative. You have to receive it. Amen.